Can you hear me okay, like that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so my name is Andreas. I uh, make websites, I make games, and I make tools for people who make games. And I want to talk about uh, what it feels like to quit your job and to become self-employed. So uh, around 18 months ago, I was uh, living in, in Zurich, <coughs> and I was employed at a web agency. I was working there as a web developer. Um, and I decided to move uh, back to Sweden. I lived a bit in Sweden, and I met my girlfriend there, and we decided we wanted to move together. So I decided I want to move back um, and live with her in her apartment. And um, I also decided, it was, uh, I think I was 29, and I decided I wanted to be self-employed before I turned 30. So I, at the same time, I decided to move to Sweden back again. Um, I decided I wanted to be self-employed, so I did that, um, and I want like I want to talk about a bit like how that actually feels to give up your like nice secure job and to do the thing you think you really want to do and the challenges of that. So if you have any questions like while I'm talking about this, just uh, just uh, say something. So we maybe it's a bit more interesting if we have like a I don't know a conversation or something like that. So when I, when I was employed at different um, places, I often felt that, like, I was usually pretty happy working there, but I was often felt that there were certain things I knew better, or like I thought there were certain things that were sort of obvious that people who had, like, were upper in the hierarchy than me, that they were doing it like, in a wrong way, or there could be things that could be done better, like my boss or my product manager or things like that. And I always had this feeling, oh my, this should be like really different. This is like totally wrong way to do it. And I, if I wasn't charged, I would do it better. So the first thing, if you if you just, like quit your job and you become self-employed, um, if you actually have, if you actually start to have like responsibility for yourself, you realize that that's um, like it really changes your perspective. It's actually really hard, um, or you understand why it's um, why people. Why it's so hard to make get like everything like really right, like you get the um, like project project management right, or like and things like that. Um, and once you go like indie or once you go self-employed, you like sometimes you wish you could blame your boss that like things are not going as you want to or as you plan. And um, usually, oh, like for me at least, it was like that. That the things I was, the things I thought were really important when I was employed, are not important at all anymore when when you're self-employed, when you actually have to make decisions every day about what you're going to do, how you're going to make money, and how you're getting to the goal you had. Um, and the reason for that is I think that you're giving up, like the first thing is you're giving up security for freedom. So that means um, you can't just like have like a safe job and, and think about, um, oh, this would be so great if we would do with the company would do this. Um, so, like, if you if you're employed, you have can have a, you can have all these fantasies about oh, this would be like this really good idea, um, and you can and you can be safe because you know no one's ever going to do that because people who are actually in charge of deciding. Um, it's not you in that situation. Um, but once you're self-employed, or once you go in the you can realize, and like if you if you decide that that's the way you want to make money, maybe that's the thing I need to add. Um, that having an idea, or like maybe usually you have like different ideas, that committing to those ideas or committing to one of those ideas is, can be really scary because um, you're going to pay for your mistakes and you're going to get paid for your successes. So that means if I have, let's say, I have like three different ideas for game. Um, I have to make a call which one of those games, let's, let's say I really like all of these three games, but I have to make a call uh, which of these games is actually worth my time investing because your time is really your salary if you don't have anything else that you can depend on. So that can feel really scary. And it, um, I mean, in the worst case, I can, it can like paralyze you that you're like too afraid to make a decision. Um, at, uh, at Nordic Game, Niflas did a great talk about that is um, like one one of his takeaways was that it's really important to 
to make a decision at all instead of it's not so important what decision you make. Um, because if you're not making any decisions, if you're just like, keeping all these possible uh, decisions in your head, you're never going to make any progress. Um, so, so I guess one thing that's really important if you want to be, if you want to go like 100% indie or like have your own business or whatever, that you, you need to learn how to make decisions and not be scared of that. Um, because you're not going to know what the outcome of the decision is. You're not going to know in, um, if, the, if, if your decision was right. Like you have to, you have to make a decision and you have to reanalyze again after like a month or whatever. And you might realize it just wasted a month and then you have to get over it and move on. Um, another thing I learned during that time was that like I, I really love to think about new ideas and to like try to plan them and like to think everything through and then um, so I have this ideal uh, game or this ideal product or this ideal tool that I had that I want to build. And then um, and I have this also this idea like how long is this going to take me? Because you, I mean you try to make like a guess about that. But like in reality, once you actually start doing it, like once you actually start to get down and like program the thing or design the thing, um, then you realize that all the plans you made in your head, like and all these different options you had in your head, there, like they they become like totally meaningless because once you start, so like just put one hour into this idea you have, and, like make this like if it's a game, make like this one hour prototype, and and everything you thought you knew about your idea is like completely irrelevant anymore because you have this new situation where you can you can um, analyze what you just made in one hour. And that's really, and I, there were so many times where I was thinking about something I, was, I wanted to build, like a, like this week I, I built a website for this tool I'm working on. And I literally was thinking hours about how it should be. And then I sat down and made it like in one hour and the result of that one hour was much more, um, it was so it was so obvious for me that okay I should just stop thinking about it, just do it and and then after doing it then start to think about it again but not have it in your head all the time um, and because you sort of you're wasting a lot of uh, focus and attention this way so um, that's another um, another quote um, you can't think your way out of something which is a uh, it's a quote from Merlin Mann who came up with inbox zero that's a uh, that's a sort of, uh, if anyone knows that term, it's inbox here is um, how, you organize, how you organize your email. And anyway, he came up with this, um, or I like guess a quote from him that um, says that the thinking is not getting you closer to anything. Like you really have to start doing, but then also like after you start doing it, like reanalyze what you actually did and if it's getting you closer to your goal. So yeah. So I guess my advice is like do what you want to do and see what happens and see where it leads you and not try to plan everything out. Um, um, like, and I guess the same applies to not only if you have a job, but maybe also if you go to school now and then you, just, you say, oh, you want to get self-employed, you want to do this full time. Don't try to plan it out too much, I think. Like, because it's in, a, in a way you're wasting time, like start, instead of planning everything out and like write it out like a business plan, like try to, and, like take out like small points and like put them into action and then say okay did this work or didn't didn't this work or try to do like things in the like small scale to, so you can you can validate if your idea is going anywhere or not. Um, another thing I had to learn was uh, to say no, which is also really really important. Um, like. The g one game that I worked on uh, was Spirits, which I worked on with <coughs> some friends of mine who live in Berlin. Uh, and so the Spirits got some visibility. It's a game for, for iPhone and iPad. And, and once you get the and once you get a certain level of visibility, like people come to you and ask you, "Hey, shouldn't we do this? We have this great opportunity for you to like for advertisement and or whatever." Like you get like lots of mails, and you have to decide to what you're going to do with them. Like you can either ignore them. But maybe you think, okay, maybe there's like this one mail that's like you want to, you don't want to ignore everything you want to see. Like maybe that's a real opportunity. Um, but you really have to learn. Like it's really hard if you're new to this to understand 
um, what what like what what a good uh, proposition is, or like if people who are writing to you, if they're just spamming out everyone who is like on the app store, and it's like a lot of people, or if there's actually something interesting in it for you. So we have to learn how to sort of like try to figure out like is this worth your time or not, and you have to tr like figure it out fast because otherwise you're wasting too much time on it, and you have to. And you have to be able to say no, which for me is that yeah, I really had to learn that. It was really hard for me to just say, okay, I'm, I'm sorry if you're not interested in this. Um, leave me alone. Um, the other thing we learned the hard way is that everything is negotiable. Um, like if you, so let's say you, 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 have, you made a game and you want to release it, and there's a people who are interested in your game, um, and they want to do like some kind of contract with you where they negotiate the terms for that. So whenever you get like a contract for your game or for your product, you that's really like a, you should really see that as a starting point. You should almost never like, get there's only a few cases where you, you can like sign it like without changing anything. Like I don't know. I mean there's some things you can't change, like you can't change that Apple takes twenty percent of your of your revenue. But like like other companies you really have to negotiate the terms how you want them. Like you should never like say, oh, there's this big company and they can't. Um, we, we we can't negotiate with them. Or like we even had like contracts where we people came to us and said, hey, we have this idea, should we do this like promotion thing or whatever? And then we, we, we the only thing we thought of, our options were was yes or no. We never thought, oh, we could actually ask them for the <coughs> terms. Like that's we didn't even think about that. That's really something to keep in mind that if someone comes to you and asks you about something to do uh, with your product that um, you have more options than just say yes or no. I um, guess I have to skip a bit of this. Uh, working remotely can be isolating. Um, if you used to like be <coughs> in a university or if you used to be in an office with a lot of people, um, if you like, do your own thing, like with one, if you're alone on your own or if you're if you Friends work on some else, maybe you don't have money to start over the office. Um, it can be like hard to you know, stay focused, or like, it can be hard to feel uh, isolated being in the place you are in because your job does not no, does no longer have this uh, function of like enriching like your social life. You know, you can't like just do small talk if no one's there. Um, so you have to adjust to that. But the good thing about that is like meeting people is actually very easy. Like with events like this, you can. There's like a lot of events you can go to. There's a lot of uh, ways to approach people, and especially in our in our fields, people are really nice. So um, don't be afraid to to like try to balance it out by like meeting people. And sometimes you have to remind yourself that um, to do that. Um, <clears throat> advice is dependent on context. Um, that means that. If you if you listen to advice, like, like now I'm giving, I'm trying to give advice, but if you listen to advice, you also have to make sure that that the go that your goals are, are in line with the person that gives you advice. Like they all like if you when you go, when we went to GC, there's always this discussion about like people present their way how they do things at GC at, uh, at the IGS, for example, and that people present it in a way that this is the way you really should do this, and then people like people get it the wrong way. But you really like if you listen to someone and you think you have some interest to say you really need to analyze what's your goal and if your goal is really different from the goal from the person that's talking or like writing, you have to sort of filter that out yourself if that person is going to do that for you. So you have to figure out what your goals are and <laughs> to understand what you're really good at. And um, things you're not good at you need to be able to give away to other people. Um, like that can be anything, but like all these things are like accounting. Uh, you don't you don't want to do it taxes just that you really want to pay someone to that was not the alarm. Okay. Uh, you need to figure out like what you're good at, what you enjoy doing, and then um, you figure out if you can if there's other things that you can let other people do for you just to save you time and sanity and then work on your stuff instead. So um, that's it. If you have any questions, we have six seconds left. <laughs> <laughs> Some more, Eric's yeah, yeah. 
A quick question. Uh, did you ever use any of these like getting things done methods with you know, checklists and all that stuff? Uh, like like any kind of personal workflow? Uh, I do try to do inbox zero, um, but I, I think it's more less really like a per like it's like really a personal preference. Like just try to figure out what you like the most. I would say uh, because the way I work might be completely insane for someone else. Because it's like really, I think it has a lot to do with I don't know how you like with your personality basically, like what works for you. But but yeah, there's there's like tools that can help you and just try to find the, the best tool that works for you. Again, maybe answer it afterwards. Well, just a quick note about uh, contracts.